Well, my friend, how are you? It's been a while. Thank you. Good seeing you. We always run across each other in the hallways, and we, we do. We do. Throw we, up the high five. But. Yeah, we we see a lot of each other, you know, <laughs> at different conferences. It feels like this year more. I don't know if it just feels like that, or it's more than what it was. Well, I finally pinned you down. Well, I appreciate the time. You know, you've been a warrior for the last couple of years with CathWorks. So, let's let's bring the audience up to speed where you are. Yeah, you know, uh, first, uh, you know, I, I represent a great team. Uh, uh, I always say probably the ugly face of a really good team. Uh, so we are now at, uh, at a full commercial stage, you know. As you know, uh, the technology, uh, our platform, the CathWorks FFR Angio system, combines artificial intelligence and computational science to help physicians detect cardiovascular disease, and now uh, through the progressions that we've had through innovation, we can even help with the treatment planning and do additional work after the treatment is done to validate whether you know things have worked out well or not. So we are in full commercial stage um, in the US, in Japan, and earlier this year we started Western Europe. So uh, we are in that unusual stage of startups, you know? And so, you know, old new, but uh, you know, uh, lots of good work's being done. Yeah, and there were a couple years where this FFR had the hand at it, and based on the work that you and, and, and some others in the industry have done, have really proved out with evidence that this deserves a spot at the table and is critical for workflow, for patient, device selection, and follow-up. Yeah, I mean, as you know, um, unfortunately, cardiovascular-related uh, deaths is the number one cause of deaths. You know, in the U.S., over a million patients, about 18 million patients globally. Coronary artery disease, the blockage of your artery, is the single largest contributor. Uh, according to AHA, about 48% of those patients who unfortunately die each year have CAD. Um, two out of five patients, 40%, are still misdiagnosed or undiagnosed. Uh, so the clinical evidence through FAME trial and the follow-up trials always was there. It's a uh, grade one A evidence in every guideline globally, yet it is not fully adopted. There is disparities, you know, you have places like Japan that are very close to 85, 90% of, you know, guidelines versus US or Europe that is well below 20%. The novelty of FFR Angio was around this idea of can you go at some of those limiting factors, the barriers to adoption for traditional invasive uh, FFR. And uh, conceptually when, you know, uh, FFR Angio was put together and in our first, uh, you know, limited launch to bring to market in 2018, we believed that it had that. But as you mentioned correctly, we learned very quickly that once you have the concept, and actually we had really good clinical evidence from a diagnostic accuracy. The next just as important thing is that how well does it integrate within workflow? We did not have that. And you know, and the market was not shy uh, in telling us the feedback. Uh, so you know, we had our work cut out for us. We had to go back and you know, added AI to the technology, a significant amount of automation and uh, you know, easy integration, and I can say that combined with real world evidence, and I'll talk about evidence generation, but the real world evidence that we were able to put together opened up the door, and it was basically going from one side of the room to the other side and then uh, seeing the lights. Yeah, and I, and I love that you cover that because workflow in the cath lab, it's got to be seamless, high adoption, high utilization, as long as you don't inconvenience me. But why the difference of uh, north of 85% in Japan on that market and less than 20% in the US? Do, have you, do you have any philosophies on why that occurs? Yeah, you know, there are two very uh, clear uh, distinction we see. Uh, one is the health system, uh, the way I think the reimbursement model works, you know, um, it doesn't create any incentive for uh, physicians to not do 
what's in the guidelines. In fact, it forces that. Uh, I think that goes a long way. And the second thing is that I think you do see in some of these markets uh, a, a higher interest for these kind of digital technology. You know, we're, we're you know, we, we refer to it as a gamer generation, you know, uh, you know, change that's coming in. I think the combination of the two uh, uh, is what's helping. We see that um, the level of patience that's required to learn something brand new. This is transformative, which is exciting, but it changes what people are used to do. Um, I also have learned, you know, uh, the hard way that, when you ask uh, uh, physicians to let go of something that they were doing with a hand yes. and trust a machine, yes. that process requires uh, some relationship building between the physician and the machine. They want to know what's happening in the black box. So right. we've had to get really good and creative of telling the story of what's happening in a machine without giving the whole machine away. Got it. And tell me about the relationship with Medtronic. That's been an amplifier for you. Absolutely, so as you know, uh, we announced uh, uh, a couple of years ago publicly uh, that we entered into this multifaceted strategic partnership with Medtronic that involved different aspects, but a couple of key elements of it was, uh, first, Medtronic made a significant investment in CapWorks, you know, uh, that enabled us to basically have this clear, concise strategy of Innovation, evidence generation, and commercialization, you know, uh, educating the market on the technology. Uh, as you know, startup CEOs spend a lot of their time, we have to raise money. Not having to worry about that allows us to be very focused. The second part of that is we entered into a co promotion activity where we got to partner with Medtronic commercial team for their coronary renal innovation team. It's a massive global team in US, in Japan, and Western Europe to bring this technology immediately to customers. And the last part of it is that we are uh, in a deal that uh, the best way to describe it is that up in completion of certain milestones, Medtronic has the option to acquire Catworks, and we have the option to compel Medtronic <laughs> to acquire Catworks. So it's like an engagement that we're not going to get out of, you know. So, uh, it's been great because our vision, our hope uh, was that this technology has the potential to become a standard of care. In order to achieve that, uh, there were a few things we needed to do. We knew that we uh, need to continue to create strong clinical evidence, you know. Uh, over the course of this partnership, uh, we've been able to, we're very close to completing a landmark 2,000 patients randomized control trial called ORISE, where we will compare the outcomes of FFR angio to your traditional invasive wire, and hopefully it'll be the last time we refer to that as the gold standard and we establish a new gold standard. We've been able to go to market in US, in Japan, and now Western Europe. This is in hands of hundreds of physicians where it would have been impossible to do on our own. Even best funded startups, just the time that it takes to build that kind of channel is basically the, the money you don't have. And then the last part, which I think has been very, very important to us is, as you know, this was a very transformative idea, innovation uh, created in 2014 in Israel. Yeah. Uh, we've been able to maintain and invest in that team to continue the innovation. So the product that we have today is significantly better and better fits the needs of the physicians. And I just think that we are just touching the surface. So the partnership has played all of its roles. Uh, I usually joke and say we are the best funded startup, you know? So you get the best of both worlds, you know? We you know, we have the backing of the world's largest medical device company and we get to partner with them, but still get to behave like a startup so you can move fast, make decisions, and make things happen. This is a construct that we're going to see more and more deals like that. And my friend um, from Canary, Bill Hunter, says it's the mouse dancing with the elephant. And it's a beautiful dance as long as they stay out of each other's way. Yes. Because innovation, scale financing, um, leave the smart people alone, not to say they're not smart, but leave the innovative mavericks alone. And also it can't be missed is medical device historically 
has had this mindset, big strategic, we develop a device and we're done. Whether it's a catheter, a stent, most of the R&D money goes into that, it's launched, whew, let's go. And then R&D is sort of iterative in the background. AI, robotics, digital solutions, you're just starting once you put a product in the hands of the clinician or the care team, and that team in Israel has been probably pounding away for years with a very specific skill set that would never exist in a strategic. And this is where that mouse dancing with the elephant has to be choreographed perfectly. It is, it, you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, first, on, uh, on the analogy, you, you don't want to be uh, where the elephant puts their you know, foot down because you're going to feel that. And I think uh, the governance in these kind of deals becomes critical uh, for you to be able to maintain the independence to be able to go. By design and for good reasons, large companies and the smaller companies have different risk register. Uh, they have an ability to make decisions faster. So you want to be able to maintain the best of what smaller companies can do. And I do believe that in the landscape that we are in, we're seeing it here you know, at, at the MedTech meeting, that uh, we will see more of these deals because I think uh, smart, larger strategics uh, can see that money can go further, your capital can go further, if you're able to de-risk certain things innovation becomes a critical part. I just talked about the clinical evidence. I, I can tell you from you know my history of being you know at larger strategics doing a 2,000 patients, you know, randomized control trial of the caliber we have done would take more than you know 15, 16 months in a large company. But and 40 know, million dollars. Yes, <laughs> right. yes, yes. And, 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 and the cost that goes. Whereas you know in a startup because survival is Correct. You know, you find the best but most economic way of doing it. And, and, and the thing that you talked about, uh, which I think is true with AI and robotic and software as medical device, which is what ours is, is still too new. You know, um, most of larger strategics still do a waterfall, you know, product development. So agile is something new to them. Yes. So you can get a lot more done in a very short period of time. Uh, since we've announced uh, you know, the partnership, we've had four major releases. Yeah. Uh, you're absolutely right. I very much can relate to the days where here's our launch and we'll see you in like four or five years with the next iteration that's going to come out. So I think this is what the space can offer, how you can keep the innovation and the entrepreneurship going from one hand but on the other hand, I think ultimately, if the goal is to put this in the hand of uh, physicians, you know, globally, mm -hmm. if you want it to be st standard of care, the reach becomes important. I, I and I know I get in trouble every time I say this. Uh, I just don't think the world needs one more sales team in, you know, in in international cardiology. You know, there's like there are people who are professionals who've been at this are knowledgeable. So we get to experience that and. Uh, I think if this one works, you you probably are going to see an accelerated. I know there have been a lot of interest in the last few years where people try to understand, uh, you know, the elements. It's a partnership. Mm -hmm. It requires a give and take. Yep. It requires a good degree of trust. But you can tap into the best of, you know, both worlds. And Medtronic's been doing that with CathWorks, with uh, Backbeat, with uh, David Hockman and yes. Darren Sherman at Orchestra. So I'm really happy to see that. And here's the one thing that can't be lost. The brilliant minds that create these new technologies would never take a job inside of a J&J, &J, a Medtronic, an Abbott. They just wouldn't. Yep. And it's not because it's a bad place to work, it's because it doesn't speak to what makes them amazing right. fringe performers. And so creating that bridge between the two, and then as you said, the economics, is if I've got to put another 30 million into clinical, and then I've got to be out raising money as a CEO instead of solving real problems. And then I've got a staff of sales force. I need a 4X multiple on every dollar that comes in from the investors, therefore it makes the acquisition price perhaps untenable. So now you win as the CEO and all your teammates know, I'm going to cash a check. As long as I do my job and deliver right. what I'm going to deliver, I don't have to look for an acquirer. That changes everybody's attitude inside of an organization. It does, and if you really go back to the principle that as a CEO and board member, you're 
Uh, number one responsibility is to create and maximize shareholder value. A construct like this enables you to de-risk the things that are usually high capital intensive, but they come with both time and outcomes risk. You go building a large sales force of, you know, a, a, even if we did a fraction of what we now have access to, it still is a few hundred people globally. The time and money, and you know, uh, being able to target, attract, and retain top talent is a full-time job. Full-time job. So if you have a full-time job of raising money, if you have a full-time job of attracting and retaining people, where is the time? When, it, when do you get a chance to go execute on a really good strategy? That, I think, is a trade-off that exists. And I think you're absolutely right. I think the ecosystem that we are in, it requires all of those personalities. People who want to push the boundaries and think of creative things, that probably is not something that is sustainable. It's not reward in a large strategic no. either. It's yeah. the opposite. And, 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 and for right reasons, right? Because you're, you're, you're making different kind of investment that comes in. On the other hand, you will kill the spirit of innovation if you do, but you know, one of the things that I think also comes out of these um, deals like this, if you can do them successfully, is you get to acquire a core talent that you cannot attract on your own because they will have an attachment to what they have developed and That's they right. want it to be successful. That's right. Whereas if you just told them, hey, you know, we wanted something from scratch, that probably that draw is not there. You're right. You're right. So we're, we're at the Avamed conference, TCT's in 10 days, and you've got a pretty audacious lift ahead of you there. As we close out, what, do we, what can we expect at TCT and what have you got on your plate? Yeah, uh, this will be, TCT is the biggest meeting of the year for us in you know, NRH cardiology space, but this will be our largest, uh, or as our marketing team would like to put it, the most significant presence of CathWorks yet. You know, uh, we have a significant amount of scientific data coming in. Uh, we have a, a very uh, new and creative way of engaging customers that's coming in. And we have some cool things we're going to basically unveil when we get there. Um, from a clinical data perspective, uh, the results from provision randomized control study, this is the first um, FFR NGO and first of any NGO based technology uh, randomized control trial done in Japan. Uh, the results of that will be presented. Uh, we'll have the results for the two year uh, follow up outcomes of global registry for FFR NGO, uh, about 2,000 patients. That will be presented. We have two brand new features, you know, uh, along the way of treatment planning for FFR Angio. Those results are being uh, presented and they will actually be published uh, simultaneously. And last but not least, a, 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 a full host of engagement with uh, experts. What we learned uh, through this rapid growth and commercial engagement is the need for continuous education and what we are hearing from the physicians is that they enjoy uh, more of kind of hands-on small setting peer-to-peer -peer education so we're gonna do that at TCT uh, so and you know we're gonna go all in as you know we have a great team that actually enjoys uh, being active so we have a big social media plan that we're gonna push we're seeing a shift in the space as it relates to the category we are in. We were very lucky to be the first uh, doing what we do. Uh, there are others coming in, which is promising for the space. It says the opportunity Validating, is real. Right? Yeah. Um, we see it a responsibility of us as the leader of the space to continue to innovate and educate. So uh, this year TCT is going to be big. It's going to be busy, uh, but it's going to be really fun. It's exciting, and to create a category, there's a responsibility. And to create a category, people are chasing you. And so you have the resources, you have the brains, you've got the innovation, so it'll be exciting to watch. Yes, it will be really good, and looking forward to, you know, uh, follow this meeting with, with, with a busy TCT, and hopefully put a nice uh, bow on a, a very busy 2024. Well, congratulations, my friend. Thank you for having me, and looking forward to seeing you in DC. I'll see you in a week and a half. Yeah, that's cool, thanks.
I'm Joe Mullings from the floor of the MedTech Conference in Toronto 2024. Be well.